Jura has traveled to Old Town seeking a cure for his grayscale, which has progressed enough to cover much of his chest and back, as well as his entire left arm. He has been confined to one of the six cells in the citadel. As Samuel Tarly is collecting empty bowls from cells, Jura reaches out for him and asks if Daenerys has reached Westeros yet, but Sam claims he does not know. Jura is later deemed beyond saving by Archmaester Ebrose, and is told that he has one more day before he will be deported to the Valyrian Peninsula, to live out the rest of his days with the Stone Men, as the Grayscale will take over his mind in six months. Within that time, he still seeks to end his own life before then. He properly introduces himself to Samwell, explaining that there is no point writing to Lyanna Mormont, as House Mormont forgot about him a long time ago. Later that night, as Jorah writes a farewell note to Daenerys, he is visited by Sam, who properly introduces himself as one of the Night's Watch and claims that out of respect for his father, Jor Mormont, he will try to save him from his grayscale, though he admits he has never tried before and is the only one who will, despite it being risky for both Sam and Jorah. Aware of the alternative, Jorah consents to the treatment. He is given rum as anesthesia and a mouthguard to bite on during the painful procedure to stay silent. Bearing the pain, Jorah allows Sam to start peeling his infected skin away. With his grayscale now cured by Samwell, Ebrose allows the release of Jorah from his cell. When Ebrose asks of the disease, Jorah says it must have cured itself from having plenty of rest. Before Jorah leaves, he tells Sam he will return to Daenerys, that both she and Sam have saved his life. Jorah shakes Sam's offered hand in gratitude before leaving. After leaving the citadel, Jorah makes his way to Dragonstone, where he is finally reunited with Daenerys, who gladly accepts him back into her service and calls him a friend. He also meets Jon Snow, who served under his father, Jor Mormont, in the Night's Watch. Jorah later attends a meeting, during which Tyrion Lannister suggests that they should capture a white and bring it to Cersei Lannister, thus proving that the army of the dead is marching upon Westeros and allowing Daenerys to take her troops to help Jon. Jorah volunteers to join the mission and leaves Dragonstone with Jon, Davos Seaworth and Gendry. Upon arriving at Eastwatch by the sea, Jorah quickly recognizes the imprisoned Thoros of Myr, having fought together in the Greyjoy Rebellion. Unfortunately, the mention of Jorah's family name creates friction with Tormund, due to Jor Mormont's role in persecuting the wildlings. Nevertheless, Jorah accompanies the party north of the Wall. Once beyond the Wall, Jorah discusses his father's death with Jon Snow, stating that being killed by his own men was the worst way for Jorah to pass away. They also discuss the fact that Eddard Stark wanted to execute Jorah, and Jon offers to give Longclaw back to House Mormont. However, Jorah refuses, as he brought shame on his family, he has no longer the right to wield the weapon, which must remain with Jon, as Jorah wanted. Later, the party is attacked by an undead bear which severely injures Thoros before Jorah kills the beast with a final strike. Jorah and Thoros then discuss the Siege of Pike, with Thoros acknowledging that he was so drunk that day that he completely forgot the battle. The party finally encounters a small group of whites led by a white walker. They attack it and Jorah is assaulted by a white who tries to choke him to death before being shattered when Jon kills the white walker leading them. They successfully capture an undead but it draw the attention of the whole undead army, which rushed at them. While Gendry returns to Eastwatch to send a raven to Daenerys, Jorah and the others find refuge on a small island in the middle of the frozen lake that the Whites cannot cross. They spend the night on the rocks, to which Thoros does not survive, and are later attacked by the army of the Night King as the ice layer over the water is solid enough. Jorah fights along the others with a pair of dragon glass daggers, destroying many Whites, but the party is easily outnumbered and only survives thanks to the arrival of Daenerys and her dragons. Jorah is shocked and saddened when he witnesses the death of Daenerys's dragon, Viserion, at the hands of the Night King. The survivors manage to escape, except Jon Snow, who is taken beneath the lake by whites. Back to the wall, Jorah tells Daenerys that they should return to King's Landing and attends Jon's return to Eastwatch after he was saved by Benjen Stark. Jorah goes to King's Landing to attend the negotiation between Daenerys, Cersei and Jon, explaining the origins of the Dragon Pit to Missandei on the way. They are greeted by Bronn who escorts them to their seats, with Jorah sitting right next to Daenerys. Jorah does not speak during the discussions. Like everyone else, he is surprised when Jon openly pledges allegiance to Daenerys and stays at the Dragon Pit while Tyrion tries to convince Cersei to help them after she left the negotiation. 
After Cersei seemingly agrees to send troops to fight the army of the Night King, Jorah leaves King's Landing with the others and make his way to the north. 